Yeah, again, I think it's half about the direct implications that, oh, more people are buying Bitcoin, so the number go up. I think it's also has a massive impact indirectly of the narrative, right, that it's here. So let's get to what the suits are saying. What are they saying? What are they saying about all this? So this is from January 8th, 2024, and that's important to note because this is before the ETFs were officially approved on January 11th or 10th or whatever it was. You know, a couple days later, the ETFs were approved. Um, now, what did, this is from Standard Chartered, uh, and what did they predict regarding the Bitcoin ETFs? What did they predict regarding Bitcoin prices' reaction to the ETFs? They predicted that there would be a $100 billion inflow in 2024. Now, of course, many people, especially those who weren't into Bitcoin, said that's too bullish, that's too much. But obviously, as Brand and I have been talking about, um, you know, 100 billion in 2024 is no longer, um, <laughs> no longer impossible, right? Uh, additionally, they said that they would, um, Standard Chartered predicted, right? Again, this is not Brand and I, but Standard Chartered predicted that there would be a $100,000 US, $100,000 Bitcoin by end of year 2024 as a reaction to that $100 billion inflow in 2024. And so it's important to note, as uh, you know, we were discussing you know, a few moments ago about the gold ETF. You, know, you saw that chart a couple of slides ago. Okay, gold rose in price by a factor of 4.3 in the eight years after the ETF approval. Okay? We saw that you know, slow, dark blue line, okay, and the vertical Bitcoin line. Right? And so this is just something to think about. That, hey, if gold, with that relatively flat slope, could go up by a factor of four in eight years, despite having uh, you know, a, a supply you can't audit, right? You can't, um, ha you can't audit the ETFs, right? They can create paper gold, right? You know, forget that, you know, forget the fact that the underlying asset, you know, gold is not finite in supply, just like Bitcoin. All those factors together, gold still did a 4X, right? And so that's just something to think about with Bitcoin. We'll do a 4X next year. I don't know, maybe not, maybe we down next year. But either way, you know, the, the important part that I really find fascinating about this report was that Standard Charter predicted that there would be somewhere between 437,000 Bitcoin to 1.32 million Bitcoin that would be bought by these ETFs. And I read that and I scratched my head and I thought, well, wait a second. There's 1.7 million Bitcoin on exchanges. And these guys think that anywhere from a third to like two thirds of all those coins could be sucked off the market. I mean, imagine having any asset where you're saying, yeah, we think that a third to two thirds of all houses for all time are gonna be bought this year. Right? It's, it's something really to think about, that there's only so many coins left on exchanges, and yes, there are always the, ten, you know, the 10 to 12 million coins off the exchanges that people like you all and people like us and you know, the people watching at home own, but we're probably going to be less hesitant to sell them at lower prices than the, than the exchanges, right? So anyway, uh, this was a really interesting uh, chart. You know, it, it was um, you know, a few pages here, but ultimately my reaction to this personally was that it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. How can you think that we're going to have 1.3 million Bitcoin bought and we only go to 100K? Right? So I think either way less coins are going to be taken off the exchanges than what they predict, or we have significantly higher prices if, those, uh, if that prediction comes true. Right? Because obviously, as Bitcoin price goes up, it becomes exponentially harder to get that remaining supply on exchanges down. So let's extend that a little bit more. Do you want me to? I, I can go about this, um, this, this slide too. But, so that's what Standard Chartered said. And then, of course, you have the Moon Boys, like Brandon and me, and many, uh, <laughs> many, many people uh, in the audience here. But, the, the longer term vision, at least in my personal view, is that of what Fidelity has been talking about, right? Fidelity, I'm a fan of Fidelity, um, you know, I, I'm critical of ETFs, but I give Fidelity the credit that they at least are not going with Coinbase. Uh, but Fidelity, I think, has been ahead of the curve for many years in regards to Bitcoin. And they've just, they're currently discussing, they are currently discussing with clients a 1% to 3% allocation, even in conservative retirement portfolios, right? Now, obviously, has it been achieved yet? No. Are they anywhere close? No. But that's in the discussion. That's the articles they're putting out. That's the reports. They are investing their own company's dime and their own company's reputation into. And that's a really significant question. Because if Fidelity recommends a 3%, why would we not see other institutions also recommending a 1%, 3 or 5% in the near future, right? So that narrative will spread. And what's 3% of Fidelity? $147 billion. And again, if we assume that, that for every dollar coming into Bitcoin, we're looking at a 2, 2x, 3x, 5x multiple, you know, that is, hundred, you know, that is a significant amount of money, uh, yeah, a significant amount of market cap being raised into Bitcoin, right? And so when, you know, it's just, it's just the thought we have to have. Right now, it uh, may not seem realistic, but if we just look out a couple years, you know, two years, four years, eight years, we just look out, you know, a decade or less, you know, my question that I ask myself is what happens when we have some very high but yet not absurd number of half a trillion, right, $500 billion chasing a lower number of coins on exchanges, maybe not absurd, maybe we're talking a million coins, maybe we're talking 800,000 coins. Just a couple years ago, there were 3 million Bitcoin on exchanges, now there's about half that, right? So what happens when 
half a trillion chases, you know, 800,000, a million, or half a million coins on exchanges, that is hundreds of thousands of dollars chasing Bitcoin. The number I got here is 588,000. Obviously, it's not a prediction, but it's just that thought experiment that we're having more and more capital with more and more of these narratives changing for an ever smaller number of coins on exchanges, right? And it's important to know, again, like I talked with the government, and then I'll, you know, go to the next slide here, but it's important to know that 500 billion now, we look at that, we think, oh, that's crazy. Even if Fidelity got to that 3% allocation, that's only 147 billion. 500 billion is way down the line. It's important to note the United States of America, my home country, right, where we got the superior dollar, right, the best fiat currency in the world. The United States of America adds $500 billion of unfunded liabilities every 11 days. We think $500 billion inflowing into Bitcoin is a lot of money. We think that's hopium. We think that's absurd. My reminder is that, yes, that 500 billion we're adding every 11 days is not flowing into Bitcoin. It's not going to for a long time, but priced in terms of political currency, there is no top. We're adding more currency all the time, and market cap is downstream of price, and that is really important. I think a lot of people, even on Wall Street, are missing that fact that market cap could go up indefinitely if the bids for the Bitcoin uh, to be exchanged go up indefinitely. So the ETFs are not the end. That's the point I'm trying to make. They're just the beginning. Again, the governments are a way bigger deal than the ETFs, and the ETFs are the gateway drug to eventually the governments. So, you know, kind of a thought experiment there just for you to think about, right? That's, the ETF's not a big deal for the ETF in of itself. It's a big deal that it's the very big first domino for that viral meme of the, you know, like five-story domino, right? So anyway.